Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our second part on our discussion of equilibrium reactions. If you remember, last time we introduced reversible reactions as reactions that can proceed in either the forward or reverse direction. When I say the forward reaction, I mean typically when we read from left to right, reactants becoming products. But a reverse reaction is when the products react to form the original reactants again. Those are indicated with a double arrow, showing that the reaction can proceed in the forward or the reverse direction. So let's look at a couple of practice problems today so we can really try to nail this idea down. First problem here says that four moles of PCl5 are added to a one liter container. Once equilibrium is reached, 2.3 moles of PCl5 remain. Determine how much PCl3 and Cl2 are formed. So this is, this is like a, um, a typical stoichiometry problem. The only difference is being an equilibrium reaction, we don't consume all of the reactant. We only consume some amount of it before equilibrium is eventually reached. In this case, we're going to solve uh, using an ICE table, where ICE stands for initial change, Equilibrium. Okay, so this is very much like a BCA table. It's just uh, the main difference is the A changed to equilibrium because there is no real after or end for an equilibrium reaction. It just reaches a point at which there's no more change, but it's not really the end of the reaction. Um, so let's look at how we could use this, and hopefully you'll find it pretty simple by the time we finish. Okay, so the initial amount is how much of each substance we start with. Gives it in the problem that we started with four moles of PCl5, uh, four moles per liter, that is. And uh, PCl3 and Cl2 are both zero at the start because they're products and we haven't formed any of those yet. Okay, so let's look at the change row. Change row is the most important row. Um, and we don't really know much about the change row yet. So we're going to uh, use a variable in place of the number for the change row. So if I look at this reaction, I, I see that one PCl5 forms one PCl3 and one Cl2. It's a one to one to one ratio. So if I were to react X PCl5, how much PCl3 would I produce? Well, I would produce X PCl3 and X Cl2. Again, one to one to one ratio or x to x to x ratio. <clears throat> okay, so let's fill in that last row. The first is going to be four minus x, and x is zero plus x or just x, and also just x. Okay, remember the final row is just the sum of the previous two rows. Okay, let's look what other information is given in the problem that we haven't used. Well, we see that we have 2.3 moles of PCL5 formed, right? So we know that this is not formed, but remaining. We know that this is four minus X is 2.3, okay? A little bit of math lets us figure out that X must equal 1.7. So there we have our answer. We will form 1.7 moles of both of the two products by using up 1.7 moles of PCL5. Okay, so there's our, our first problem. And again, it's a basic stoichiometry problem. If this reaction were to go to completion, all four moles of PCL5 would have produced product, but because this is an equilibrium reaction, as that product is formed, some of it reacts backwards to form the original PCL5. So we will never use up all of the initial PCL5. Okay, let's look at a similar reaction. We'll see, this one's a little different because the reaction's a bit more complex, a bit more complicated because it has coefficients in it. So let's, let's see how these coefficients come into play. Here we have three moles of H2 and two moles of N2 in a one liter container. And at equilibrium, 
2.8 moles of H2 remain. Okay, that's actually most of the H2, so it looks like only a little bit of it's reacting. Um, determine the value of K for this reaction. Okay, so let's look at our initial values. Um, oops, we have two moles of N2 and three moles of H2 and no ammonia to start. Okay. At equilibrium, or our change, this one's going to be a little bit different. We don't have a one to one to one ratio anymore. We have a one to three to two ratio. Okay. So it's going to affect our change row. For every x, n2 I consume, I consume three times as much H. That is, I consume three X H. And for every one mole of N2 I consume, I produce two moles of ammonia. So for every X N2 I consume, I produce two X NH3. Okay, so I just wanna point out a couple of things that I overlooked in the first problem. One is the sign, okay? Why are some of these negative? Well, given that they are reactants that are being consumed, their change is always gonna be negative. Okay? So reactants always have a negative sign in front, while products have a positive sign in front, okay? Some of them have coefficients in front of the x. The coefficient in front of the x is just going to be the same coefficient from the balanced expression, okay? Right, so an x, or we wanted a one to three to two ratio, so that's going to be x to three x, two x. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Our final row is just going to be the sum of the previous two rows. So for N2, that is two minus x. For H2, that is three minus three x. And for NH3, it is just two x. Okay, so, this should be enough information for me to solve for X, because the problem tells me that 2.8 moles of H2 remain. So, right here, I know that three minus three X is 2.8. Okay, so I could just go in and solve that. you should find that X equals uh, about 0 0.07. Um, rounded just to one sig fig, but uh, 0, 0 0.067. Uh, given that we do have two sig figs in this problem. Okay. So I could simply plug those in to solve for the others. Let's see what we get, 0 0.067 times two. So this is going to be 0 0.134. All right, this is going to be 1.93. Okay, so I've got my final values for all of those. Now it's asking me to find the value of K. So if you remember, K is the value of the Q expression at equilibrium. So we're gonna to need to write the Q expression for this. Okay. Q is equal to the concentration of the products of the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. So here, my re product is NH3, and it has a coefficient of two. So that's gonna be squared. My reactants are N2, has a coefficient of one, and H2, which has a coefficient of three. So we're gonna have to cube that, All right? Lastly, I just need to plug these values in that I, that I got from my ice table. Um, so NH3 is going to be 0 0.067 squared. Okay. 
and my denominator is going to be 1.93. Oops, no, no bracket there, so it's just a number. That's raised to the power of one, so I don't need to write that, and 2.8, which was given in the problem as cubed. So there you go, there's our, our denominator. Quick calculation. Get a pretty small number. Q is equal to 0 0.000106. I don't really like writing that many zeros, so I'm gonna convert this to scientific notation. 1.06 times 10 to the minus four. Okay, and if this is Q at equilibrium, we can call that K. K is equal to Q at equilibrium. Okay, so there's our final answer. It's a very small number. Uh, so what does that tell me? It tells me that this reaction resides primarily with the products at equilibrium. Okay, we don't really form a lot of pro I say products, I meant resides primarily with the reactants at equilibrium. We don't form a lot of products. And that, that can be seen in that we only got 0.134 moles of ammonia when we had 2.8 moles of H2. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. We're gonna look at one more. And I encourage you to try this one on your own. It says 0 0.23 moles of PCl5 decomposes until equilibrium is reached, and K for this reaction is 1.25. Write the equilibrium expression for this reaction. So again, I encourage you, take a minute, see if you can fill out this ice table on your own. All right, I'm gonna jump in. We've got 0.23 moles of PCl5, zero moles of the other two substances because they're products. This is a one-to-one -one reaction. One-to-one-to-one, -to -one -to -one, so it's X, X, X. Add those up and I get 0.23 minus X, X, and x. Okay, so my equilibrium expression, that simply is the Q expression, uh, but at equilibrium, which this, this problem is at equilibrium, it's going to be products PCl3 over reactants PCl5. This one's pretty nice because there are no exponents, so it's, it's fairly easy to write. I plug in my values. PCL3 is just going to be X. CL2 is X. And the denominator is 0.23 minus X. One last thing, this problem does tell me the actual value for K. It says that it is zero, or that it's 1.25. So here I have an expression that has just one variable that I could potentially solve for. Um, the numerator, x times x, could be rewritten as x squared. Um, and this is a quadratic equation, so we would have to use the quadratic formula to solve for it. Or more conveniently, if you've got a graphing calculator, learn to use the solve, uh, solve function. If you need uh, help with that, please let me know. But it makes this a lot easier. Um, you know, there are also uh, equation solvers online you could use too. Um, but I didn't ask for you to solve it, I just asked you for you to write the equilibrium expression. So this is it. There's our equilibrium expression. We would simply need to figure out what x was. Um, or rather we could we could use it to figure out what x is. Okay, so the homework tonight is going to have you practicing using a couple of these ice tables. Um, you know, I'm not gonna ask you to, I wouldn't ask you to solve for like you know a quadratic equation 
just using your head or something. So if we were solving one of those tables, typically I would give you, um, you know, maybe I might give you one of the change values or, or the end value like I did in um, the previous two problems. But just wanted to show we could use this, uh, just knowing K, we could actually solve for the end values for any problem. All right, everyone, let me know if you have any questions on Google Classroom or via email. Have a good day.